Okay. Oh. <laughs> Gee, I really oh. miss Trish. I wish Trish yeah. was here. So sure miss do. her. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wish Trish could be here. It's not the same without Trish here. It's just not the same. <laughs> Where is our Trish when we need her? She would have had so many good ideas. Oh, maybe next time she'll join us. She's posted on Facebook. I don't know where she is. So. Okay, you can stop recording now. She she got what she was was looking for. <laughs> oh, Eric. well, I was supposed to record it for, for other people, but somebody was supposed to remind me, but they didn't. Oh, true. Oh, to record it? Yes. I know so, I'm late. I know I'm late, but I like both. But I like the color a little better. You like the what? Color a little better. Than the black and white. Than the black and white. Black and white's nice, yes. I'm not saying it's not nice. It's just, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm used to seeing that type of view or something like that. Uh, what I'm going to do it here. It stands out a little uh, more. This is not right. And actually, the, uh, the white stuff at the bottom right by the uh, light pole actually is a lot better in black and white than it is in color. Uh, it's almost too too bright in color. Does that make sense? The, uh, for lack of a better phrase, the weeds or the fronds or whatever they are, just to the right of the palm. You know, the stuff between the sago palm and the backpack stuff. Uh, What's this guy right, right here? There, right there, yeah. It looks better in black and white in monochrome than it does in uh, color, in my opinion. In my humble opinion. <laughs> hey, Neil. Yes, I am. Yeah. yeah, sorry. So this one here, I'm just going to turn this to black and now I'm getting confused here. This is the one that has the, the thing cut out of it. Yeah, this is the one that has the, the guy cut out of it. And this one here, I'll just turn this to black and white then. And we'll see how that works. Uh, layer. Uh, black and white. OK. And. I think I kind of screwed it up because I got that thing selected. Yeah. Yeah. It's deselected. De yeah. Five thousand hits of the back button, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah, see, that's very nice too. It just yeah. So we want to we want to bring. Anyway, it that's how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's how you do it. it uh, so we want to bring in a color layer. I'll just bring this back in since I kind of screwed it all up. Yeah, you put the cutout on the color. You didn't put I it on know, the black and white. Yeah. So, color on the bottom, black and white on top. Yeah. Am I screwing this all up? Oh, I see. I've got the wrong tool here. Take this one here and move it to there and then put it there. Boy, that worked good, didn't it? That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Never mind. We're not, we're not going to do it. Well, I just learned this editing stuff is really difficult. All right, no, so I, I have I have a quick a quick and dirty with <laughs> with that photo. Yeah. So go go ahead and get out of out of Photoshop. Yeah. And go back to Lightroom. Yeah. Um, go to your um, cropping tool. You know the uh, where we're going to crop it. We're going to adjust it. So yeah. do that. Do custom. Uh, and yeah. And enter custom. About two thirds of the way down. I'm in custom cropping. What do you need? Yeah, down down where it says enter custom. Keep enter. Going. Keep going down. Keep going. 
custom size. Uh, right, no, but we're going to we're going to enter. If you enter scroll custom down, size, it's right above thirteen by nineteen. Cut out. There you, there you go. go. There you go. You want me to enter a custom size? Sixty-five by twenty-four. Okay, sixty-five by twenty-four. This will be new. Hit okay. This is a, a like a okay, and we're gonna stretch it a little bit more. Okay, and then I'm gonna have you turn. Yeah, stretch it out. Now I'm gonna have you turn the picture. Turn the picture. Yep. Or turn, yeah, yeah, turn turn the picture. So rotate the picture. Grab it in a corner and rotate it. Uh, go the other direction. No, you got to go up the. You got, you got to go up the top and the table. There we go. Yeah. So and yep, right there. Hit and hit OK. So if I was going to do this, what I would do with it, Jack, is I would print this and hang it at an angle like that. So it's a diagonal photo, but it's captured that and your and her bags, but it's gotten rid of all of the other, but it has its own little story to tell. Mm -hmm. That's my quick and dirty that I would do for like fun it. on that. I like it. What do you think, Jack? Yeah, it's interesting. Of course, that pole, wall, it just really distracts me having that right in the center of the piece. Oh. No, I like the angle. I like that idea. Yeah. No, I think it looks great. I kind of even like the pole in the middle. Do you? Yeah. But that's just me. You like the pole and you're not even from Warsaw. <laughs> yeah I, I wish there was a way we could actually rotate it on on the screen here but i know we can't but that's that's just i think that's an interesting to rotate what you know to actually you know have it physically rotate you know you know it just lightroom won't let you do that it, it likes square lines and you know uh -huh. all that kind of stuff but anyway well, we could bring it in the photoshop and rotate it if you want have something no there. no let's i don't want to i don't want to kill a, a bunch of time but i just thought it was in, when i was looking at it i like 60 like i said 65 by 24 is i believe a film size that leica used to have and in fuji it's a one of the choices in their medium format cameras for you to shoot at this crop factor um you know it retains the entire thing but it it will crop like this and it's just a really cool crop to to shoot at sometimes oh and by anyway. the way that's how you make headers for facebook right <laughs> that's the exact dimensions for a header for facebook right okay that looks pretty good so thanks peter uh can i ask one question about black and white yeah uh i noticed you were going down and selecting black and white do you or does anybody else ever go uh, to saturation and go minus 100 or is that not, not really because it, it gives the least amount of control. The reason okay. I was having trouble doing the cutout and everything is because I never use adjustment layers, right? I usually do a whole nother photo under a whole nother photo. And so they're <laughs> separate layers. And so I really don't understand the ins and out of adjustment layers. And so when I was trying to cut out a little mask for the sign, it didn't, it, it didn't quite work. But having said that, when you do, you know, when you do black and white and you totally get rid of the saturation, right? You pretty much have just that. Whereas if you go back and you turn it into black and white and then you come in, you've got all your sliders. See, I can yeah. make that kind. Right. A lot of adjustments in the black and white. Yeah. Right. Cool. You, lose all, you lose all your contrast when you do saturation. Mm -hmm. You know, so see, I, I, I can play with it a lot. A lot okay, more. thank you. You could bring it into the Nick. The Nick. Usually uh, I use Nick also. for my other layer too, yeah. So and we might do that on another one. Okay. Excuse me, what is Nick without? Uh, Nick uh, software, uh, you know, Nick Silver oh. Effects Pro. Oh, okay. It's a plugin. Yeah. Okay. And maybe on one of the other ones, we'll, uh, we'll use it. Um, so this next image is, um, who gave me this one? That comes from uh, 
John Flor Flores. And he's not here, right? Yeah. So if you go 65 by 24 and turn it side, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, w one thing that you can always try is to take and uh, do the, uh, the straighten. Yeah. Right? It cuts off the top of the building. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But personally, I think there's too much sky in there anyway. Yeah, there's a lot of sky. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I would probably bring it over more like this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I think that's more impressive. Yeah. More, you know, just, you've still got the I idea can, of the, how, the building on the left being a, just a straight vertical uh, building with no major changes. Right. And then what John was saying about using uh, graduated filters as opposed to using a... Um, you know, using a uh, vignette, I'd probably darken this bottom part here just to kind of take. So it would make it less distracting. Make it less distracting like that. So you tend to focus on the buildings. Mm -hmm. And then we could try that little uh, trick where you take the highlights, put them all the way down, mm -hmm. take the shadows, bring them all the way up, then go down till we just get blacks. Again, I don't care if the bottom gets black like that. And then bring up the highlight the whites. And then if we do here was before. That gives you much better contrast, doesn't it? And here is after. It's a nice little trick, right? Yeah. And it, we haven't yeah. even turned, put any real clarity on the thing. Yeah, contrast. You know? And of course, we could always try black and white, which right. oh, for, yeah. for me is always more impressive anyway. Contrast, yeah. Contrasty pictures are better than black and white. Uh huh. <clears throat> By far. To me, I prefer it in, in black and white, but that's just me. To Anybody me that's else? Almost, that's almost too contrasting in color. Almost too contrasting in color. You're right. Yeah. When you do that, Maybe some, because I saw it the way it was before. and comparing it to what it is now i don't know although that's not a bad hdr look almost but the, subject, the subjective feeling is that it's too contrasting oops um <laughs> you know so we can uh, lighten it up a little bit Make it a little less contrasty. Hmm. Anybody else? It's interesting to look at the uh, architecture of all those buildings. They're all tall and vertical and all the same without much variation. You've got that little item in the lower front of the thing that, that varies and you've got some trees that you can see but all of them are just everything goes just straight up or they're all they're all the same there's not a great deal of variation in there what do you say you say you like them better leaning oh, no no it's just the it's just the architecture in general i'm just making mm -hmm. a comment about the overall architecture it's, right there's such a you want you want to know my they're opinion? All very, they're all very, they're all first cousins to each other. It's because we have no women architects. <laughs> <laughs> just, I, I, okay, the, the, not to interrupt, but I just got a Saint Francis of Assisi entered the waiting room. Who the hell is that? Really? <clears throat> let them in. Oh, let them in. That looks good. Interesting. Yeah. Really interesting. Well, I was just going to say that I think I would um, I would burn in uh, a little bit of that area on these two buildings on the right. Uh, just to kind of bring out some of the details that are a little washed out. 
I'm sorry, on the left. On the left. So yeah, this building right here. Uh, this can... one, and then this other one, right? This in the, one. Yeah, that one. Huh? So you want to kind of darken them. Yeah, darken them a little bit. So we could just do a little down and dirty thing, just kind of darken it like that. Yeah, yeah. That helps. And do the same thing uh, with this one right here. Uh huh. Yeah, that's a little better. Let's you see a little bit more of the detail in the uh, in the building. Yeah, detail and contrast. Mm -hmm. How about the sky? Can we? Yeah. The yeah, maybe take an adjustment brush and kind of brush in. The adjustment um, brush. We can do that. Let's let's see. If let's make it a little bigger. And so, who was Saint Francis of Assisi? Did nobody there? It's a picture of St. Francis of Assisi. So I just removed him. That's Johnny Flores. Is it? That, yeah, because Johnny's one of the deacons at the church. And so he may be using... Well, now you speak up and I just... <laughs> I just I said him. that I said that earlier. It must have been on mute. Yeah. It must have been. Oh. I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear it. So did you kick him off, John? I removed him from the list. Tell him to come back in, Eric. Oops. And this time he needs to tell us who he is. <laughs> yeah, Turn I mean, on his camera. I mean, just let everybody in. So better sky? That, that looks good. More dramatic. Mm -hmm. kind of I'd replace it. I'd uh, replace the sky, right? too, if it was mine. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Just too much of that white cloud on the right. That, uh, yeah. I'd make it a more dramatic yeah. sky, maybe, or make it a sunset off to the right or a sunrise off to the right. Do we want to replace the sky? Give it a try. We haven't done yeah. one yet, have we? Okay. Might as well. Can't dance. <laughs> Too wet to plow. I'm going to go back to doing things and that I, is so clouded right now. I know how to do it. So they kind of suckered me into buying uh, Luminar AI. <laughs> Even though Photoshop replaces skies, but... Not Luminar as good as Luminar fat. does. <laughs> I know. You used that on a couple of your other ones a few months ago, Peter, didn't you? I have. Yeah. I have. Luminar, the yeah. Independence Day. Catch but if you, need, if you need skies, I can let you have skies because I have like, I don't know, 3,000 of them. Wow. Um, don't show me this anymore. Well, get rid of that thing. Why is that in the middle of my screen? They're trying to sell Because you. it's a thing. It says, uh, there, don't show me a, this anymore. Remember, Turn off. be kind to your web footed friends for a duck. Oh, there it is. Just it a Every time I clicked on it, it took me to their website and wanted me to buy it. Yeah. So, yeah. okay, edit. Of course. Um, we go down the sky, uh, sky selection. Oops. Who said that about their web-footed friends? Me, of course. <clears throat> You're a Prairie Home Companion fan. Yeah. So well, actually, it goes back to Mitch Miller, but that's another story. But and well, beyond, that right? before that. So you're old school. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I'm older. That's because I'm old. <laughs> older than me, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. We want stars in there? No. Ooh. Oh, that's, that's an interesting look. It is. Yeah. yeah. How about a Milky Way? No, it's a Milky Way. Yeah, you have to flip it though, because it's going the other direction. Oh, that's, that's interesting. interesting. That's a kind of dramatic one, huh? Yes, it is. Yeah. So wouldn't you have to tone down the buildings a little bit? No, go down, go down, go down now to uh, you know, sky orientation. You want to go down to da, 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 da. Do a reflections, go down to reflections when you get a chance. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay, so Keep horizontal uh, mask refinement, uh, scene relighting, we need that. You have to relight yeah. the scene. Yeah, really relight the scene. And That's then good. you want to do reflection. Well, if there's a re I'm trying to see if it changes the reflection in the blue building that had the blue in it was picking up the blue of the sky, but it doesn't. It's not doing it. No. Not so much. 
So that only works on water. So but anyway, that's that's kind of interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, very interesting. Well, that's tremendously different than it was when you started. All right. So, yeah. so it makes it a much more interesting photograph. Yeah. yeah. The initial one was good, this but is. that's good, but yeah, this is that's this, this is yeah. So sometimes if I make this one a little more transparent, it kind of tones it down a little bit. So evidently, John, when you removed him, it blocked him. So he can't get back in at all. So I don't know if you need to resend an invite. Or... We're working on his picture. <laughs> right? Well, that's, I don't, if it doesn't have a name that I don't recognize, that's why when it came up to that 3171, I know that number because that's John Luna. We went through this before well, because for some reason it doesn't give us his name. It gives us that number until he actually comes on I mean, the screen. In What's the worst that's going to happen? Some guy's going to run naked in the back of the thing. <laughs> Who cares, right? I, it, well, I don't just, know how to get him back. I say let everybody in. Yeah, why not? Yeah. So do we like this one? We're just giving everything away, man. We're just doing all this. <laughs> let me see if I can figure I out like how to get this one. one. You like this one? It's got drama, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna flatten it because I don't like to keep all these layers here, and then I'm just gonna close it and say yes. We'll save it and go back to Lightroom, and there we are. Much better. Yes. Uh, because I'm reporting, I can't get out of the Zoom. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Hang on. I get this. Never mind. <clears throat> Here's the old one. And here's the new one. Eh, it's a pretty big improvement. It almost looks like it's a cartoon, like a Superman's going to fly out of there or Spider-Man or something, huh? Uh, it can be arranged. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I All right. Agree. That place where it used to be nothing but sky now has got that pink color at it and lots of yeah. interest. And it's just... And I mean, it's perfect, too. Look at this. I mean, it just... it. No vin no cutouts, no nothing. It just pasted in there perfect. Fills it in. So is that a lot better than what Photoshop can do? Photoshop does a really good job. It's just more work. Really? Right. Photoshop gives you a, 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 a gives you a, a, a an extra layer with this with the thing on it. Plus it gives you the mask that you can alter. It's a lot more there's a lot more information there but it's it's also a lot more work this is like one click and yeah like like i mean when you go into photoshop and you add the sky it, it it's there it does a really good job and it's quick but however if you look at it real close it doesn't overlay on everything you can actually see the sky carried over on top of the subject you're trying to show so you have to go back and remove the sky or do a layer mask to get rid of the sky over the top of your building, for instance. Yeah. So He's trying to log back in as himself now, John. So we'll see. Well, I, I just sent him a new link. So, so he, here's here's one of mine. Okay, and this is a uh, a raw file. It's forty two megapixels. So if we try that same trick that I talked about, you take the highlights all the way down. You take the shadows all the way up and then you reduce the, the blacks and do the whites. Wow. I mean, Boy, that's a dramatic difference. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Look at all that information that's there. Yes, on the yeah. inside of this room here where it was all black. And if I do that transform <laughs> thing and crop, and bring it down. Oops. Like that. I probably have to darken it. Maybe uh, even take out some of the vibrance. It's a little too vibrant. Or, or maybe do a little burning in the doorway where that gravel is. Just a little bit. Oh no, that's I like to I like to do the uh, vignette right here. The, uh -huh. the, you know, when you darken it like that. Oh, wow. That's beautiful, yeah. Right? Yes. Isn't that incredible? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's 42 megapixels. You know, look at all that information that's there. Yes, yeah. The detail and the color. Like the detail of the door, the ground. 
mm -hmm. outside, even if. And so when I'm shooting, I know that all this information is there. So, you know, I can have an image that looked like that. Yeah. Really? And I know I'm going to be able to turn it into something uh, a really nice. Anyway, I just wanted to show off to everybody. Yeah. So I shoot a lot of images. I shoot a lot of images like that. <laughs> I know. Uh, have you used that on, on images that are not so high contrast also? Yes. Yeah. I mean, here's another, here's another image that's, uh, is that, it's less contrasty than that because it's it's all outside but if you do the same thing if you get lower the highlights all the way raise the shadows oh yeah thank you the blacks do the whites you know crop it down so that it doesn't look so hokey yeah. right you know, like, like, you know, I'll, I'll do the, the little vignette across the bottom here. That Big Bend, is that where it is, Pete? Yeah. Big Bend State Ranch. Yeah. Right. So we haven't even begun to play with it. And it's a phenomenal image already. I mean, if you look at this is what it was. Uh -huh. Wow. Oh, wow. Of course, I'd still like it at my crop, but you know, hey, I'm kind of stuck on that crop tonight. <laughs> hey, I thought that was one of the most clever things of the evening with the, to do that little thing with Jack. I mean, we were all floundering to figure out what we could do with Jack's thing, but yours, yours was a, a real work of art. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Peter, John Flores is on now. Go back and show him what his turned out to look like. Okay. Um, or did you not save it? Here, oh yeah. Well, here, here was what we came up with. Can, can you hear us, John? I can. You can. Okay. Yes. Uh, here's what we yeah, kind of came up to straighten up your photograph with, but people weren't satisfied with this, so we kind of turned it into a sunset. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Nice. Little we sky replaced buildings. We cropped it. We darkened the bottom. Um, we uh -huh. gave some more contrast to the uh, to the buildings, and then even like even like I say, that wasn't enough for people. They they thought, oh well, it's you know, let's do something special. So right, we so took it in the Photoshop and then uh, used. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, what really helped was with the the building in virtually in the center. You got some hints of color in that. Just yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's so it, it had some reflection on yeah, that building, right. on that, that building right. with the cross and everything on top. Right. Yeah. Not overwhelming, yeah. but enough to give it character. Yeah. yeah. It's really not even over overdone. So sorry you weren't here for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, a little technical problems on my end. Sorry. Sorry, it was it was recorded, Johnny, so you'll be able to see okay. it. Okay. Uh, yes, thank you. So um, he submitted another image. We could try this one. And that one, when I was taking, this is in Ireland, and when I took the picture, um, I had turned off saving it in RAW, and I was saving things as JPEG. So mm -hmm. I don't, unfortunately, I don't have a RAW image of this version. It's OK. So we can. Go into the vault. We could try the same thing. This is the trick that I've been using. Do you, do you use a uh, Lightroom? No, um, I purchased Pixelmator for my Mac. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, I, Adobe's just a little bit more than I can handle. It's ten dollars a month. Dollar. Yeah. Is it down to ten dollars a month? Yeah, ten dollars a month for Lightroom and Photoshop. Oh, okay. really? It's for, it's for your computer yeah. and for your phone, <laughs> right? Yeah, and for your yes. phone, and uh, yeah, yes. plus a free oh. website and uh, uh, just it, all these incredible yes. other tools. Well, it is it is kind of the the gold standard. It I, is I the gold standard. Yeah. Pixelmator is one of the two or three good competitors on the Mac, mm -hmm. but it's. It, it's twenty dollars for a permanent license. There's no. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. But it does it does a lot of this. It's the interface is different, but but it's it's pretty robust in terms of what. Cool. So, 
before I uh, anybody have any suggestions on how to start on an image like this? Nope, I like the baseline you've been doing. Okay, so being consistent. Yeah, with the black highlights. So what I've been doing, John, is you take the highlights and you turn them all the way down, and then you take the shadows and you put them all the way up, and that kind of gives you a dead flat image, right? And then you take the blacks, and I'm going to hold down the Alt key on here, and this works. As, and this shows me these the, those areas are totally black; they have no information whatsoever. So. And I can do the same thing with the whites until I start to see the little white things appear, right? And so that's just by just by adjusting the the the, the whites and the blacks on it. Oops, I hit the wrong thing. That was the original image, and that's this one. Yeah, yeah, it 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 definitely it it pops the colors out better. Uh huh. Sometimes I think it pops a little bit too much. So I've been taking the vibrance and putting it down just a little bit to reduce it like that. Now, how about cropping? Okay. Anybody think we should crop it? Yeah, a little bit. I'll, I'll plead the fifth. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty, the two trains are about equally far apart. I mean, the, the fronts of the trains. So I could uh, just uh, yeah. I got the column on the right hand side. Right Put the take the column out, John. Is that yeah. what you're saying? I don't mind that column myself. But... Uh, the column right. Well, I, yeah, yeah. I, think, I don't. I, the column's not really <clears throat> distracting, but the column's it, again. Where, where's your focal point? I focal think it's far enough up the right that the column is not a problem. So I'm that's sure. cropped that way. Is that better or worse? A better. 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 Yeah. Everybody agrees. I like it. Yeah. Um, like it. I do like to darken the bottom to kind of lead us into the image. That's just something I always, almost always do. I think it would be nice to have somebody or something down there in that place where it's white, just white in the distance there. Yeah, it's just right here. Yeah, yeah, no, right that's here. too bright, <clears throat> too hot. Something like a person, a person standing there waiting for a train or. A, you know, a woman with a hat. Paste, cut and paste. Yeah, yeah, we could paste a person in there. You know, kind of. <laughs> I know it's it's just not there. So you, unless right. you add it, you're not going to get it. Right. So I mean, we if it really, I don't mind this spot back here. You know, but we could darken it if we wanted to. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah, it does look a little hot um, after, especially after the adjustment. Just curious, Johnny, where is this? This is in Dublin. This oh, is the, yeah. the Dublin train station. Yeah. We were taking a train to Galway and um, that mist coming in and the idea that it looked like the trains were just, yeah. you know, getting ready to float out into space there uh, and yeah. cut this, this, this commuter. It just, it just seemed like a, a, a good shot. I took, of course, this is one of about six that I took in this, particular yeah. area this is this was what i thought was the best one yeah i'm going i'm going there by the way john in in um oh yeah in, in uh september i'm gonna spend Gosh, a month it's in just, Ireland. it's just so filled with with photo ops i mean it's 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 yeah. a beautiful country I'm, I'm looking forward to it so i don't know if that made it better or worse i think better you think better i do yeah and so we could Sharpen the whole thing a little bit more. Like that. See, to me, sharpening always increases your depth, your feel of depth. Here. Let me sharpen it down a little. And, and when the image is soft like this, I, I this was I just bought the camera and not that I'm any better with it, but my my depth of field it was it was kind of close so everything in the background is sort of soft mm -hmm. i don't know that there's anything you can do in post production to fix that not really you could you can sharpen it a little bit but if it's not sharp it's it's just not it's just not going to be sharp it's just not going to be there yeah right you can 
pick an area if you really want, you know, like if I wanted this sign here to be sharp, you could pick it out and make it sharper. Mm -hmm. Or that clock. You know, and maybe uh, set the white, maybe a little higher contrast, right? So I could do that or I could do the clock. Mm -hmm. you know, I'll just but, copy. People. I was just gonna say, but to me, almost the the look and feel of it because of the fog and everything, mm -hmm. I, I I kind of like the story it's telling by not being sharp and especially the uh, blur of the person that's mm -hmm. walking. You know, it, it's kind of telling that little, you know, foggy morning story where you know yeah. there there's not anything that that's super super sharp. So it's kind of like Am, am I there? Am I not there? I've I've had mm. complete days like this. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I like the I, agree. I, I like that it's not tack sharp. I yeah. agree. If uh, if it right here where I did this little darkening spot, I wouldn't mind sharpening that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Really yeah, well. I, think, I like that idea. Yeah. Of, what of what the, would that the add? Darkening leads you back to the outdoor uh, mm -hmm. perspective there. And and kind of sharpening those tiles in the foreground, mm -hmm. then I don't mind it being blurry like uh, like Eric was saying, going back there. And Pete, I don't know if mm -hmm. if there's a way, because I, I didn't notice it until you were actually zoomed in back there. Yeah. That red light on the tran you know uh, back there in the back underneath the nope underneath the clock oh, underneath the clock yeah the, the back in the fog uh -huh. if there was a way to kind of mm -hmm. make that pop towards us a little bit more because you know the way you cropped it it's that's kind of almost where the focal point is this little now. light right here yes yeah i mean we can let's yeah. see if we do the uh saturation on it yeah you know until you zoomed in on that area i didn't realize that was fog i just thought it was sort of a bright morning and the uh, uh you know just a little bit of a too hot it even you know sat back there and now with the fog that makes sense but, uh, right and there were always wandering around in the fog but that's another story so you kind of don't notice it but it is a uh, a lot more set is that what you're looking for yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh -huh. Too far away, though, I think. It's a little far away. Yeah, but... far away. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. So, of course, we always have the option of turning it into black and white. And Jesus, yeah. everything looks better. Oh, yeah, I think this white. is great. Black and yeah. white. It's fantastic. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's just... I, it, I, it's... Like, I like black and white. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, amazing. we bring this in the Silver FX Pro which is the winner and, um, you know, turn it into a black and white there, but this just gives us some idea of, of what it looks like. So I'll leave it in color. All right. So, I, I have to go. Okay. Okay. So, should we do um, one? This is one of John's images. Should we see how it work, how the technique works on this one? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna say good night, guys. Okay. Okay. All right. Good night. I'll take care. Yeah. You know, a lot of times when you do that, the saturation gets to be too much. Mm -hmm. So I might just turn that down. And if it was mine, I might just crop it in a little bit more like that. Okay. Still looks a little crooked. And I might even turn the vibrance down a little bit more. And then 
I think this bush here is a little too much. I might darken this bush down. And maybe this one here is a little too much too. And then I might just do a vignette kind of a thing across the top here. So this was it before and after. Did I lose the whole character of the thing? Uh, I, I, yeah, let's see. Can I share something at the same time yeah. you are? No? Here, go ahead. I was going to say, I kind of like the shadows yeah, I'm, that I'm, were there I, in the front I'm being darker. Oh, uh, yeah. I can't. Hang on. Never mind. Again, it's too vibrant. Let's see here now. Uh, I was going to share. I was going to share what how I did it, but I did. Now I was working with the raw file, and because right. I couldn't send the raw file, I had to send the JPEG. Uh huh. And so in the JPEG, you're not going to be able to bring out the shadows, the dark of the wood. And what I did with it was I did the same thing you did a while ago with your doorway scene. Uh -huh. And by doing it, I brought out the wood, which kind of framed the the house. Okay. Ex and, and exaggerated the oranges and the greens and the yellows in the background on, on the trees. Desaturated the tree to the left. And I straightened it out. So I took out this bottom left corner. You can see the bottom left corner of that window. So if you bring the crop up a little bit more, yeah, there you go. It takes out that corner. So the raw file gives you a much more, you can still do things with a lot of stuff with the with the color, <laughs> with Lightroom, but you can't do stuff with shadows. Right. And, that's, and the shadows is what the detail is, and that's why you shoot in raw. Right. And then, and then when you saw my doorway, the one I did, it's like, wow, you could see every detail in the door and in the wood. And everything. Right. There's nothing. There's there's no detail here. So, so I, I I probably made it worse. Huh? What do you think? No, I mean I think I think it's fine. No, uh, I like I like it. I just I like the darker shadows. I don't like seeing all of the leaves, you know, in in where the shadows were. So I probably would would yeah. dark. Yeah, exactly. Darken that piece there. So, yeah, that's not bad. Oh. There we go. Yeah, that's good there. Mm -hmm. So, this, this may be a stupid. Darkened this guy up in here, then, right? A little bit. Yeah. Johnny, what were you going to ask? And there's um, no. There's no stupid questions. Don't worry. Yes, I, promise. I know. I know. I know. Um, but just because I'm, I'm not real familiar with Photoshop at all, what you're doing is you're selecting a filter, a radio filter, mm -hmm. if I'm seeing, mm -hmm. right? And you drag it over the area, and then the effects that you apply just occur within that zone. Is that what's happening? Yeah, uh, more or less. I mean, it's kind of a down and dirty thing. So if I if I draw, there, there there's a couple different tools here, but one of them is just yeah. a circle. So if I draw a right. big circle around the building here, right, yeah. it kind of knows to select the building. And if uh -huh. I just make it brighter, I can make the building brighter, uh, make the building okay. darker. Okay. And That's it's kind of just yeah. selecting the building. Now I could do a better job making sure that it doesn't darken the rest of the stuff by changing stuff. But in general, that's that's okay. kind of what we're doing. So and you could you you could potentially draw on it, draw like a, a polygon around the building to be real precise if you wanted to. Now or I'm even using, use the brush tool, like using, I'm using Lightroom. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so that's really kind of a Photoshop thing over here. Uh -huh. Like Eric was saying, I would make a brush, and, and, and this is a brush. And so, if I just to exaggerate, if I make everything really dark, 
See, I can. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Here. yeah and the yeah. Not, wonderful part about this, if I think it's too bright, I mean, too dark, I could just lighten it up. Uh, you know, or if I want to do, uh, if I decided I like one of the really saturated, I could really saturate it. I can do right. anything with right. that little. And it's right there. Yeah. Yeah. It. yeah. Right. And so I have, here I have a brush tool which I could use. I have a circle, which I can select mm -hmm. things with, a circle oval, and I have a, 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 a graduated filter. Okay. Right. And so each one kind of does a little, a little something uh, 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 different. So you could take out, say, the, the highway sign that's in the background there. Not mm -hmm. really. I'd really go into yeah. Photoshop to do that. Okay. That's not Lightroom. Yeah, Lightroom. Uh, uh, Lightroom just really makes your photograph the best that it can be, but it doesn't take out power lines or put right. another person in no. it. Right now, like that. if he was needing to take out just a couple of the leaves, like um, so, click on the if you, the yep that one there, yeah. and yeah, if he clicks on that, it it will try to get rid of the sign and do the best it can so it yeah but usually what i use that for is like on my tabletop stuff sometimes i'll miss something so um some of the leaves yeah out in front of the house there's a couple of spots that have leaves um you know i'll i'll use that to to get rid of of leaves and stuff um it doesn't do a good job of, of grabbing no. stuff like that but something in the grass um Right, like uh, if I didn't want this rock here, right? Yeah, it does. It does a, a decent job of, of doing right. that. So, or yeah. if I wanted to clean things up, it's really for cleaning up spots and stuff. So, if instead right. of the, this was a rock instead of a spot, I could clean up all these little rocks here. Right, sensor right? dust. Yeah, and that's that's normally what I do when I'm doing this in Lightroom, but if I want more fine tuning stuff, I'll either go into Photoshop or as Peter was suckered into and I bought, you know, I bought the Luminar AI <laughs> data race tool is kind of amazing itself. Yeah. 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 They, I think Luminar AI kind of stole on one's uh, erase tool. Uh, on one had the most perfect erase tool I think I've ever seen. If you just click on the spot and you will go through and highlight the, the lady, you could highlight the lady and the lady disappears. Right. Uh, and it fills it back in, kind of like content aware, it automatically fills in all the other area. You don't need any other click on a spot or anything like that, it just does it. Uh, but I mean, there's, there's things that on one does that, that, that other things, but I have to uh, go back to the minute, uh, Peter. This one? Yeah, I, I hate to do this. I got, I got to run, guys. Y'all have a y'all have a good okay. evening. Okay, all right. Go yeah, back to your uh, develop and do a radio filter. All right, now down at the very bottom of the radio filter menu is there's the invert thing, right? Right. How do you get yours to stay on? You once you click it, it sticks. Not on mine, it don't. <laughs> Yeah, uh, whatever, I gotta remember to do it every time. Okay, uh, I don't whatever, change the whole picture. What whatever you click on before you've used it. Okay, like yeah. right now I haven't drawn any any uh, uh, thing. So if I take the exposure and I raise it all the way there, okay, mm -hmm. and I do that, and then I get rid of it, and I do another one. Oops. Where, where, where the hell is it? See, it's still there. It sticks. See, I close it out. I go back to it. So for some reason, mine does not do that. Yeah, Especially you, if I close it out, I do a radio filter in one area to darken one, and I want another area, but I don't want it as dark. So I'll go back on the, and do start a new one, and I'll click another area, and I got to do the invert again. 
Uh, you 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 can't use the radio filter before you set it. Like um, you know, I usually reset. Um, where is it? Uh, I usually which one is the one that resets? I usually reset all the the guys. Yeah. Oh, I'm not even in the filter yet. I just screwed up everything. That's all right. All right. But um, anyway, what I'm saying, John, is when you select the radio filter, okay, and uh, you, if you change what it is before you use it, okay, and then now you can use it and you can change it any way you want. Like, for example, right here, okay. I've got it said it's doing nothing. So I turn it all the way up. I make it a bright spot, right? Mm -hmm. I get rid of it. I try it again. It didn't stick. Right? Because you have to change it before you use it. Right? If Okay, I see what you're saying. I always draw it, then change it. Yeah, you got to do it before you use the thing, then it sticks. Okay, never mind. Okay. All right, I understand now. That makes sense. That, mm -hmm. that not, not explain, explaining it right, but okay. okay. Move on. Now, Steve's. I I think he just wanted to embarrass us because <laughs> I I don't know what the hell you could do with that. <clears throat> well, I, well, I didn't like the background. I mean, it's a black background, but it's it's felt, and so it's got this it's got this sheen to it, you know, with the light coming in from the right, natural light coming in from the right. Yeah. Um, I wanted it to be a black background, but it's got these streaks where so the felt light. actually reflects right. light. So I just w wondered how you, how you could get that black back there. See, I thought uh, this is what I came up. I kind of like the streaks, <laughs> so I just played with it. But uh, I could have told you what I was looking for. Turned it too dark. So you you what you want to do is you want to take this whole background here, yeah, and turn it all black. I just make it black, yeah, right. I imagine that's pretty easy for you to do, isn't it, Peter? Well, well in, in Photoshop, yeah. In Photoshop, you, you kind of have to do it, you know? So if you go into edit in Photoshop, mm -hmm. and then it shouldn't be too bad to be able to select. Um, if I use the select tool, let me think where it is. Select right here, object selection, select subject. Well, it didn't do a great job, did it? Oh, so my wife got three of these little red, um, what are they called? I can't think of what they are. They're wintertime flowers. And let's see here. And I'm not going to do a great job selecting all this stuff, but... Um, Basically, you'd have to go through and select everything. Those are pretty black between those stems there already. But I guess if you wanted the exact same blackness, you know. So, you know, um, I've got a selection around it, so I would invert the selection. Well, first I would feather it, right? Um, select, modify, feather, and I'd probably feather it one pixel, right? Then I, you got to invert it, select, um, uh, no, layer, no, select, uh, where's invert right there. Now everything else is selected except your thing. So if you come in here and you do an adjustment, say I do like the levels. And you just make it black. See, I just make it black. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do a great job selecting it. I would do a better job yeah, uh, looks pretty good. tracing around the outside of the thing. So you're not streaking anymore. Not right, exactly. See, here's yeah. your original one, and yeah. here's this. Yeah, I mean, the original one doesn't look too bad, I don't think, but... Uh, I, I actually prefer the streaks. Do you really? That, well, I did, but, you know, I have no taste. So. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, if I do filter, and if I flatten this, and if I select and deselect it, and then I save it, 
what else could you do with this picture, Peter? Well, I mean, the only thing I could think of was to, I, I mean, I played with it mm -hmm. to darken these two guys yes. and then right. bring up some contrast on this guy. And, and I kind of put, tried to put a more of a, uh, uh, a light shining on just this one. I yeah. went into Luminar AI and did it and it didn't work that great. I mean, just because your other image is so terrific. Yeah. Here's, here's the black background. Yeah. I tell you what I would do right now is I would put light streaks in it now. With the black background, you can make light streaks. Uh, and you and have all the light streaks go in the same direction. That's uh, what I don't like about it. You've got two different light streaks, one going yeah, yeah, angle and the other one going the, straight down. If the, the angle the felt was hanging yeah. on, when you got it on, it just you take the black ground and you turn it out black. Now you can put light streaks in there hmm. by by either putting them in there by uh, diagonal lines and then but, adjusting it so that it fades out or whatever and running and, parallel to each other, like to parallel, yeah, they make them all parallel to each other. Lighting up, you get the light coming in from the right yeah. uh, and make them angled going across from the like right like onto the flower. I mean, of course, you could use Luminar again. Yeah, Luminar is, is really good for that. And uh, let's see if we can do that real quick. Um, what did you, come on. So, we want to use what's it called? Sun rays. Sun rays, yeah. Right? Place the yeah. sun. Let's place the sun, say, what do you think about here? Yeah, yeah. Since that's where the light's coming from, it's upper, upper right anyway. And of course, amount, overall look, sun rays length. Um, a little farther to the right would be better. Maybe right in the right corner. Yeah, put it up in the top right-hand corner. Right in the corner, yeah. Yeah, yeah right there. Mm -hmm. Let's see here, number of sun rays. I recognized him. I had to look him up. His plants are cyclamen. Yeah, cyclamen, that's it. Yeah. Thank you. It's one of those that uh, I recognized it. I knew it, I, but I had to. I tried to grow one in the summer once. Yeah, they don't like the heat. Actually, they work better sometimes than those uh, Christmas cactuses that don't know when to bloom. So that's pretty strong. But you have to mask. We have to mask them out. But I mean, it's yeah, a little more subtle. Strong. Would be better, right? And then uh, where's the okay on this thing? We'll go back to the templates. Apply. So what I did is I made another layer. Right, so I did this on a separate one, and it'll save it. And come on, it's going to do it. Okay, so I've got your old one under here, mm -hmm. and then I can either just set the transparency on it to make it what I want, right? Or if I didn't want it in certain spots, I could erase it. If I didn't, for example, like um and I might not do a hundred percent on the eraser I might do that I might just kind of erase All right so it wasn't quite on the thing here mm -hmm. like that and again it's not perfect it's something you kind of play with yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, it does add a little interest, though. Yeah, light rays, light rays, the light rays in Luminar are, add a lot of really, mm -hmm. I've done them several times in windows. I think Peter had one that he did of, was it that church? Yeah. Yeah, you had did yeah. one in a church with uh, Kim sitting at a piano or at an organ or something. Yeah. I, and yeah. it was really pretty, yeah. That was mm -hmm. the black and white one? It was black and white with sun rays coming in the windows. Yeah. 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 So... That's just all the black, mm -hmm. and that's the thing. I'm not crazy about what we did. I might move the sun, if, I mean, the sun over 
and maybe have it shining more like this. Well, yeah. This well, there. you can adjust the rays. You can adjust the rays by right. adding more rays too. But you could, yeah, I mean, you could play, a, you know, a half an hour trying to get it in just the right yeah. place. And um, so, but that that's how I would do it. We turned it, we selected the image, we uh, inverted it, we turned the background all black, right? And then we put the uh, light rays on it. So. Okay. Um, Thank you, Peter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are we are we done, guys? I think so, huh? Yeah. Yes, sir. Any more you want to show off? Wait, look at look at this one. Uh, <laughs> He is really something. Check it out. I mean, that is really clever. Yes. And, and I can see what he says. Like, uh, this is the, the crop, and then you, you hang it at an angle on the wall. And so it looks like it's, I mean, it's at an angle, but it's vertical if you're looking at the photo itself. So <laughs> thinking outside the box, that's, that's, that's very neat. He, he, he really is. He's dancing to his own drummer. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> so to speak I, I can see a a series of three photos like that you know whether it be oh. the same photo cut up or just three different ones you know yeah if you do it you know you could do the same thing do a triptych yeah a triptych and then put a triptych together as of different pieces of the same image as long as you had something in each one to be a a different focal but i think that's kind of a cool idea mm -hmm. to do that i've seen north, most triptychs triptychs are vertical this would be at an angle. That would be kind of unique. Yeah. One of those, uh, remember the old ads, is it live or is it Memorex? You know, which is the re which is the original right. photograph. But, uh, Johnny, did you have any other questions? No, I like I like John's idea about, you know, uh, taking an angle like that and, and turning it into a kind of a diagonal triptych. I, I did a uh, I took a picture of the Mississippi River Bridge in New Orleans, and uh, I turned it into um, a triptych. Um, it's framed on the wall, so it, it, it's divided up into sections, so it looks like you're looking through a window at the whole bridge. Oh, but, cool. um, I hadn't thought about doing it angular like that. That's, that's, that's kind of a neat idea. Mm -hmm. I wow. did, I've, done one tri I've done one triptych and it, and that of the Longhorns coming down Houston Street in the parade, and it uh, hangs in my brother-in-law's house. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're very cool. Here I would have had these three printed, and then hung together, like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that look good on that look good on metal. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Yeah. Yeah, I need something to go in the bathroom over the top of the, the valence back there, but um, so, so this, are these three photos? You know, like oh, it's it's one photo that I cut up. Okay. And so I would have each one of them printed. Uh, you know, this would be uh, printed uh, uh, sixteen by sixteen. This would be sixteen by whatever it is, twenty four and then another 16 by 16, and then I'd have to cut it on an angle because the veiling, the, the house slopes up at the top. Like that. It's just something I was working on okay. uh, oh. to do a triptych. Because um, I've, I've got a triptych hanging over my couch. Uh, I, that's what I was really looking for, but I'm not sure what I did with it. Uh, portrait collection, photos, you know, You'd think it'd be easy to find, but now you got me. I curious. Collections were so easy to find. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I got so many collections <laughs> done. Mm -hmm. No country. I feel your pain. Someday you're gonna have to come to my house, and you're gonna have to have a couple of beers and tell me how to make collections. Yeah, I'm doing it, but I'm not doing it very well. Beer? I mean, look at these are all collections. Oh, wow. right. My De DeWitt County shutter bugs, you know, here I got, uh, uh, I had to pick my photos for sub submitting to them. So one of the things was action. 
So I picked 11 action pictures, animals. I've got 16 architecture. And all you do is you just kind of drag them into the thing. And these were ones that of mine just to select it, which, you know, I wound up picking, um, which one did I did? I, oh, I wound up picking this one. And of course it won, it, it won first place with them. So, uh, but anyway, that's how I use it, you know, to be able to go through and do a collection of all the photos that I think will fit with architecture so that I have 20 pictures in here. And yet I'm not taking up, I'm not duplicating, I'm not taking up any room on my hard drive. These are just, you know, uh, markers to them. Yeah. Birds, that kind of stuff. So I love the collections. Um, to go back oh. to where we were, let's see, here it is. So. Okay, are we done, guys? I think so. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, I had something I had to take care of this evening, but uh, I appreciate y'all going back and showing me what, what you did with the photos. So. Yeah, it's good. Okay. All right. oh. Interesting. Well, nice to meet you, even if we can't see you. Yes. <laughs> well, he was, at, he was at the print competition. Yeah. Oh, okay. You met him. You just don't. He's, you just oh, don't remember right. him. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now I see your face. Yes, I just, yes. I have, yeah, you oh, yeah. He needs to get a hat. Yeah, I guess. We all, everybody has a hat. Right? Everybody yes. has to have a hat. <laughs> Next meeting we, on Zoom, we have to wear a hat. <laughs> I have to find one. Put something on your head. <laughs> Robert's so. got enough he can share. What? <laughs> what was that useful or fun or yeah yes 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 yeah, uh, very much yeah. yeah i can never have enough of those man i'm more i do better shadowing somebody or following you along and trying to soak it in instead of trying to take notes than looking at tutorials and trying to pause and go do it come back pause and do it mm -hmm. and i miss a step and have to start mm -hmm. all over again mm -hmm. so, so yes clear. Yeah, you know, I had one. Or, I had one. I thought of putting in, but I let time get away from me. So <laughs> next time, next time, sure. we'll do it again. Yes, thanks, Peter. I appreciate that. That was oh. cool. I'm, kind of surpri I'm yes. surprised it was Ken's Very idea. Cool. I'm surprised Ken didn't submit something. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, even yeah. most. But I'm excited. So okay, who do we so lose? Oh, that was something. Okay. Never mind. Okay, so we all done. I can stop recording. Yeah. Okay. I've got, I've got uh, judges all set up.